Hey, it's Valentina V, and today we are at Jackson Boxing Studio. I'm gonna show you how I light and shoot this backlit, moody cinematic boxing scene. It's gonna look like this. Today we're gonna be shooting night for day, which means right now it's daytime, but we're gonna wait until night so that we can control our light and bring in fake daylight. We're also going to be shooting using some handheld camera techniques and ideas of negative fill. How to make something look silhouetted and slightly wrapped, but the fill is little to no existent, non-existent but the fill is almost not there to non-existent. We really want that moody, backlit, hazy atmosphere, and it's not looking so much like that now because it's daytime. We have these fluorescent lights up top. We also have skylights. So if we were to shoot this during the day, we would have to block off the skylight indoors by climbing up on ladders and blocking them off with something or go on the roof and block them off with tarps or duvetine. And we can't really control the direction of the light that's coming through the windows. As you can see, it's just kind of there. It's not doing any straight beams. Depending on how long you're shooting, maybe you're shooting for several hours, you're doing close-ups, you're doing wides, that sun direction is going to shift throughout the day. So you have to think about that, you have to plan that. If you're shooting night for day, and you control the sun because you create the sun, then it's always gonna be pointed in the same direction and you can control wherever for however long you want. But those rays of light, they're not gonna show up unless we make them show up with a fog machine. So these foggers, just a little bit different. This one's from a Halloween store. This one is the Mystic from Master Effects. There's a lot of differences actually. So now that we've hazed the room a little bit, I can show you this is the natural sunlight that's coming through here. And it's not at all in the direction that we want. It's just through a tiny bit of the crack because the sun is going away. It's not fully what we want. So we want to be able to control that. And that's why we're gonna put giant lights outside of each of these windows. The haze is gonna catch that light and create these beautiful beams that we can aim straight at the boxers and have them behind the boxers. We're gonna take these two 600Ds, place them on stands outside of the windows, and of course they need power, so you could do that either with a generator or with just regular V-mount or gold mount batteries, depending on which type of light you get or you can just run stingers, which are just uh, giant hardcore extension cords. And that's what we're gonna do. This is another reason why you should scout the location first, just to make sure that you can reach those windows because a lot of locations, especially in LA, it'll be something like, oh, it's a diner set and it's on the 12th floor of a building in downtown LA and you, you can't put anything outside the windows. Luckily this set, everything's on the first floor, but when we scouted those windows, we did realize that they were pretty high up, they're like nine feet up. So we brought our giant box of stingers because if you have just one or two stingers and you don't know that the location will require something more, then uh, you're, you're out of luck. So good to have a lot of stingers on site. The good thing about them being on rolling stands is that I can control the direction of the sun wherever I want it to be because we can always just roll them to the left and to the right. It's back lit. Son, get it? Okay. Oh. Oh. Like I'm calling you son, like it's a diminutive term, but it's also the son, okay. Oh, yeah. All right, to have a little bit of fill light on our talent, because we don't want just the backlight, it's gonna look completely silhouetted. I want a big, soft source. Why big? Because we're shooting really wide, we're shooting on a 14 millimeter lens. So we're seeing the entire ring and because I wanna be able to get into the ring, stand in front of it, and not have my shadow on top of the talent. What are we gonna use? Well, we're gonna use a big Nova panel. It is a super powerful panel. We're probably not even gonna to need to use it at full power. We're gonna bounce it against a 12 by of, we have some options over here. We have some ultra bounce. And we have some China Silk. China Silk is technically a diffusion. There are so many different types of materials that you can use to bounce. A lot of them are made specifically for bouncing, but some of them are made for diffusing. But you can also use diffusions as bounce material, depending on whether you need a certain softness of light, a certain quality, a certain color. In this case, I want that light to be very soft and I want it to be very big 
and warm. So in this case, that's why I'm using this particular diffusion to bounce. All the power is along this wall, and this is where we are plugging in the two 600Ds that are going outside. And I'm not really sure if we can plug another light into it. So we're gonna bring the Nova and the two bay power station, we're gonna power it by batteries. And since it's gonna be very low anyway, it's gonna be at like 5% or lower, then uh, we're not really gonna run out of batteries. The Nova is really fun because I can dial in the, not just the color temperature, but also any color that I want. So if I want it to be a little bit warmer, I can do that. I'm most likely just gonna keep it at daylight though because the lights outside are daylight. I want it to seem like the lights are bouncing off the wall and then bouncing onto their faces. In my camera, I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer with the white balance there. Today we're shooting with the Canon C70 as well as the Canon CNE Cinema Primes and a small rig mat box and rails. I've decided to pretty much go handheld for all of this. Sometimes I may pop it on a shoulder rig and kind of under sling it under my armpit, but for the most part, I want a more handheld feel. It's awesome because it has this top handle that I can really hold. So usually when you're shooting 24 frames per second, you would want a 180 degree shutter angle. I decided to go 120 because I want to couple my frenetic camera work with also the frenetic energy of something that doesn't have motion blur or has less motion blur. I would have liked to have it even faster on the shutter angle, but unfortunately that means that I would have had to lose more light and the image would have been a lot grainier with that ISO up. Bring it down. Bring it down, keep going, stop. Right there. I have the back 600Ds that are outside the windows on my Cytus link. So if I want to toggle them on and off, I can. So I can check uh, increase intensity, decrease intensity, all that. I also have the Nova on Cytus as well. And striking. It's really hazy right now because we wanted to turn the hazer on early to get this entire gym fully hazed up. We're gonna try to now bounce this diff off of here, see how that looks for our foreground light. And I think that should be it. We have our two background lights creating streaks, our haze on, this, we're ready to go. We're ready to rock. Go for it. So one thing that I'm noticing is that the skylights actually never turned off because we have these street lights outside that are sodium vapor colored, which actually I don't mind because it gives it a little bit of color contrast with the tungsten at the top. I'm moving around, I'm trying to give it like a little bit of frenetic energy. Keeping the angle low. All right, move away from me a little guys. So this is with the Nova at 1% intensity. Matt, if you could use my iPad to turn the Nova off. Let's see what it looks like without the Nova at all. It's a much more dramatic look. Still looking really good. I did the white balance at 6450 Kelvin because I wanted it to be a little bit warmer because I just want this scene to be like two friends having a good time laughing and I want it to be a really positive, warm, sunshiny scene. And because all of our lighting had to be daylight, the only way to change it is to, to push it into warmer. That also pushed my skylights uh, warmer as well, which is totally fine for me. Now I'm going in for the close-ups. I switched the lens to an 85 from a 14, and the T-stop went from a lowest 3.1 to a lowest 1.2. So actually now I opened it up a lot and I'm able to get more light. So whereas before my ISO was 8,000, now I can be in the 800 range, which is native for this camera. So it's gonna be a lot clearer. I think the wide is only seen for a couple seconds. It's okay if the blacks are a little bit crunchy. And because we have our fill light just being this huge source, it doesn't matter if I stand in front of it because I'm not gonna be covering up our actors. It's just a very general soft source. I really wanted to haze this entire giant room, 
just to see those light streaks from the window come through the room. Because when you turn the house lights off, <laughs> so that's why I use haze, because when you turn the house lights off, ta-da! It just gives it a more cinematic, a more dynamic feel. And when you pop in for those close-ups, you can use those rays of light as elements that give you a little bit of a lens flare and really are actors in the space as well. As you can see, the streaks right now are set to when we did our wide in the boxing ring. And for this particular shot, I want our boxer to be here. There is one really strong beam that I want to reposition. So right now it's shining all the way over here and I wanna reposition it so that it shines right here, right between his arms. So I'm going to get on walkie and we're gonna move that light to the right. A little more, a little more, stop. So now that I have these two lights placed exactly where I want, I want a moving key light because I actually positioned them for two different punching bags. Because I want the backlight to do most of the talking, I'm trying to get this key light to be as soft as possible and as slight as possible. So that's why we're using the Light Dome SE with the inner baffle and the outer diffusion. The 300D2 is a great light for this because it's lightweight. It can go to 1% and we can just arm it over with batteries attached. So it could be like this and we could just walk around and direct where that key light is. I put some distilled water into a spray bottle and we are putting that on our talent to act as sweat. Not only is this part of the production value and it's gonna look good, but also the little beads of sweat are going to reflect our lights. And it's just gonna cause a little bit more texture in the shot on their skin as well. And let's key from this side. That looks good, Giselle, and give it, uh, give it a little more wrap from the front. Got it, cut. That's why I like having my key light be super mobile. If you're filming a sports commercial where there's a lot of movement, you wanna take advantage of different angles, up, down, around. It helps if uh, it's just always moving around for you. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of how I would shoot a action sports shot. I'd like to know what techniques would you use to shoot an action sports sequence? Let me know in the comments for a chance to win an F7 light. If you like this video, if you like what we do in our little walkthroughs here, please like the video with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna follow me, my social media links are down below. Until next time, Happy boxing and shooting. <laughs>